Oh no, it's a black screen! Oh wait, no! I am recording the next part of my Monster Rancher Evo Let's Play! What else? In the last episode, we were asked by Bruce the Lodestar to help save the town and restore GNA production to normal. Today we start the dungeon after showing off with a four, um, the four monster show looks like. That and to show you my current statistics, so on and so forth. This LP is going to be relatively short, mainly because of one reason. The amount of recordable material is really low. Because the rest of it is like training and stuff. But I think of it as a good starting LP. That something is wrong with my, uh... What's wrong? Hey, bro, my monster isn't doing so well. If I don't do something, it might collapse this weekend. So, I could use a fish, fish dish level 1. This is something that will occur every now and again. I didn't expect it to happen, but it's kind of convenient. Um, sometimes your fellow breeders, or monster racers, or whatever you wish to call them, will need items in order to take care of their monsters. Um, in this case, fish dish level 1. If you don't do this, one of two things can happen. The more likely thing that will happen is that your monster will get sick or injured. You don't want that. So do as they say, and get fish dish level 1. And, on another note, you know how I said to keep going to the saucer shop over and over again? Well, we've got our reward for that now. Behold, as soon as I can find it, the big Zoko Bot! This is a reference to one of the other PS2 games made by Tecmo, but this is an example of a question mark subbreed. Um, question mark subbreeds normally tend to be very strange and unusual, like the big Tokobot. But yeah, that proves why it's so useful to check on that every day. Just a little tutorial on that. Now it's like the main holder again! That's a reference that's gonna be um, made throughout the thing, except I should have said priestess. Oh well. As you can tell, now that we've given the fish dish, the monster won't be injured. Which is always a good thing. Wait, what? No! No, you're not about to tell me. No! What? What? Sick and injured monster! <laughs> My two performers! <sighs> I'm gonna have to cut to when both monsters are healthy. And well, and do a show then. Hey everybody, I'm back. What, did you miss me already? Okay, so my monsters have fully healed up. And, um, yeah, so I can finally show that four monster show them and go beat the shit out of some people in a factory. I'm green! Now you'll notice that everyone has a different gadget, or, well, a different prop or something. The only one I don't think has changed is Goffrey and um, Marlene. Why do you ask? Um, Tico has a yellow kit. It's because I upgraded his um, the kit he's using so that way he could use a brand new one, which works a lot better, honestly. I did have to change some gear. And I'm sorry I couldn't inform you until now, but now that it's out of the way, and the cat's out of the bag, let the show go on. God, I make that pun too much. No! I screwed up. But anyhow, that's Maya's new trick. 
You'll notice, hey, wait a minute, your Pororo has a yellow okra egg. What's going on? Well, the, I don't know why I was talking like that, but, um, I gave it a new gadget. I looked at its moveset in the animal pool and discovered it has more power-based attacks than it does intelligence. Meanwhile, its accuracy is still pretty high, higher than most monsters I raise. So, I have, for the time being, decided that I'm going to, um, raise it in power instead. Very simple. Now you may have another question. Why didn't you give it a girlfriend? No. Well, I want, I want Morty to be all power. All the power. But by putting it on this character who has, doesn't have a specialty, but has a slight boost in virtually everything, um, this means that its other stats won't trail behind. And, that, and I made sure to choose a gadget that, although it doesn't list it, does increase accuracy somewhat. So I wasn't leaving a stat completely behind. Money, money, money! Lots of money. Now, as you know, Morty was injured. Um, he has been getting injured a lot. Um, something I'm gonna have to explain later is DNA. Um... Right now, there should be a whole bunch of things coming up just as I say it. Um, there is such things as injury DNA, sickness DNA, um, bonding DNA, show DNA. Let's see, if there are any I'm forgetting, they'll be popping up right about now. Um, very basically, how you raise a monster affects their children. Um, one form of DNA is actually training DNA. A monster could get used to being trained one way, like through power training. And also, policy DNA will work on that too. So the child could like easy, what could work better um, DNA-wise, with um, power-based tricks and easy policy. However, there is one problem with both of those DNA sets, and it's the fact that um, sometimes the monster that's born will have a nature that begs it to have a harder policy and has moves more built for an intelligence setup. This is a humongous disadvantage in um, breeding monsters. But it's not exactly a bad setback. As you can see, I aced Pororo. See, I don't even need this extra round. Anyhow, this is his new gadget. Yeah, how would that feel, being spun at top speeds with lasers shooting at you? Yeah, that's gotta be pretty adrenaline jumping. Whatever it's called nowadays. Now you can't, with this many monsters, you can't do them twice in a row. However, considering the difficulty, sometimes you need to go back to others in order to get them above 100. It doesn't matter who MVP is. You could try to get a specific monster to be MVP, but at this point in the game, you want to mainly focus on getting everyone above 100 for maximum benefit. And whoever gets MVP, gets MVP. And it's that simple. As you can see, I've greatly improved at the yellow game. Well, sort of. Also, um, now that we are almost done in Grabad, we are going to learn an important piece of story and move on to the next town. I will not say what it is in order to keep the story secretive. But no doubt, Nayuda will want to go to Campana, and no doubt, Marlene will not want to go to Campana. No. Yay! Just in time! Now I can get to where he's up to Mark. Fukasa Ninja! Also, um... I guess I should explain the DNA is a bit better. I'll start with, um, the easy ones. Sickness and injury. Um... Shoot. Okay. Sickness DNA and injury DNA are based on how many times a monster gets 
sick, and or injured in life. If a monster doesn't get injured or sick in their if a monster doesn't get injured in their life, then the offspring will be immune to well, not be immune, but it will be less likely to have an injury. Meanwhile, a monster who has gained at least a injury in their life means that the child is slightly susceptible and so on and so forth. The same thing goes for sickness. They're virtually one and the same, but they don't share the same DNA sets. So that's good. Just make sure you don't breed monsters that have bad DNA together. At least try to pair it up with a good DNA. And to weaken the strain. Now, on another note, the next DNA to talk about is motivational DNA. Motivational DNA. Um, when a monster is um, when a monster trains, its motivation goes up. Its motivation gets to a certain point and drops to zero. This adds to the score and is divided by the number of times it's dropped. So, say a monster um, has 100 motivation the first time it does a show. So that's the number divided by 1. So it has 100. We then do a show with 80%. Oh. This will show uh, my monster's abilities. As you can see, accuracy is still climbing higher and higher. Power is starting to catch up. But even so, as you can see, Marty, um, this Morty, despite being injured, is actually still getting more stats. Um, as you can see, Jaws is also really high in intelligence, and Maya is high in speed. We will not be using Maya however in the dungeon. I just will not. I am not watching my time. So, to be completely honest, I'm just doing this until it's over. I'm cutting it apart from there. But, um... Yeah. It's... The game is relatively... Um... Stoic. You don't have to take as long as I do. I take my time, particularly so I can have a generation of monsters strong enough to um, last in the after game. Now, select your monsters, like I am always have them all the way in back. Now, this is when you're going to start getting enough anima to increase your monsters' abilities. Now that we have some equips, I guess I'll show them off. The Gold Claw gives you acceleration up, but it reduces your de your defense. Black Gloves give you a uh, power up, but it also paralyzes you. I don't like to use these personally, so let's go! Welcome to Crabad Factory, the place of evil. Because I'm green! As you can see, we're in a very disgusting, very arid environment. Makes Grabad look like a meadow, doesn't it? As I've said, always talk to this pot. When you talk to the one at the end, you can, if you lose, talk to the pot at the beginning and teleport to the end. Nice little shortcut now. Now that we're deep enough in... Cutscene! Good. Looks like we managed to make it. I never would have thought there was a way in here. Unfortunately, this is as far as I can take you. Any further and we'll run into those guard monsters I was telling you about. Okay, thank you, Daisy. Leave the rest to us. This place actually has a lot to do with the main plot. So, heavy spoiler warnings, obviously. Also, you'll notice that I have a blue move. Um, to be honest, I unlocked a support the support skill of each monster. By doing this, um, I spent 500 anima each. Every monster has a support skill that does a random effect. You may be asking, 
Hey, where's Morty's and Jaws? Well, Morty and Jaws have theirs, don't get me wrong. It's just, um... Oh wait, going backwards. Bleh. It's the simplistic fact... What is it? Flower. How does a flower grow in a place like this? It must be a mutant flower. Eh? Great, cutscene. You think that's the door we have to go through? Yeah, but we had to do something about this weird water first. But if the door is over there, there must be some way to get to it. Yep, let's keep moving. Ah, uh, so nonchalance. The first thing you have to do in this dungeon, it's pretty straightforward, is to unclog the area and drain the water. Then you open the door. Archer! Also in the last battle, although it's not here, we fought a tiger. Here, however, we have two new monsters. Strangely, they both have the same breeds in them. This is a Naga with a sub of gel. And this is a Lessie with a sub of Naga. So, um, yeah. Keep those monsters in mind. Ta -da! As you can see, my monsters have definitely become overpowered. Heck, even, um, Jack is doing decent enough damage. Though technically he doesn't have a physical attack yet. Now you see here, the telepathy. Use the power of telepathy. Now our hit rate goes up, so we don't miss nearly as often! That thing was spiked! How did you kill me? Fukuzo Ninja! As you can tell, Fukuzo is very overpowered. And as you can see, we're also getting a lot more anima. A hundred every fight. Attack! Attack! Alright, again, this is the monster that we fought when we already got here, called the Baskerville. It is a tiger with a sub of Geaton. No, not Naga, Geaton. They have similar color schemes, with different designs in all. Okay, the gimmick of this dungeon, going backwards, isn't going backwards, but, um, solving the small varying puzzles. None of them are hard. Most of them are actually insultingly easy. Attack! Fail. Attack! Fail. Attack! Success! How is that telepathy? Never mind, I'm not gonna argue with logic, video game logic. Tecmo has just as much logic as Nintendo, believe it or not. But there's Sony in here, too. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm probably gonna start cutting out battles now, unless something new shows up. But, puzzle elements! What's this lever? It is one big lever. What's it for? Even with all our strength, it wouldn't budge. Yeah, but I bet it has something to do with the strange water. I know, what about a monster? Why didn't you say that in the first place, you lazy butt? For some reason, a human can't push this, but a Peroro can? What? What? Yeah, guess what? The drain's a screw. Screw you. Now the water is drained, and the lighting will change. The place will no longer be subtly glowing green. It's now going to be a dull gray. What? Clams! I'm not eating that. No, you can't go over there, though I thought you could. Ah, dark!
Suezo is domination. Hey everybody, battle's over, so I'm back. Another chest, what's in it? Gem? Well, at least that's understandable to be put in a box. Attack from the rear! 